thank you all for coming this evening. Uh, there are chairs in the back if you need them. Uh, I appreciate your attendance. This is the uh, first meeting of December 2022. Miami Township Board of Trustees. One meeting left in 2022. I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes of July, or excuse me, July, November 21st, 2022, as presented or amended. Kind of, um, I move that we um, approve the minutes. Okay. Are there any changes or correction deletions to the minutes? I did not see any that were necessary. Okay. Um, a typo or two, I'm sure you figure that out. So, I would entertain a motion to adopt the minutes. Did you just move? I did. Move. I'm sorry. I'll second. I think you're used to being chief of the model washer here. Mm -hmm. Call in roll through. We'll call the roll. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Wait, I'm Are you? Well, mm -hmm. I was told that I would call the roll. Oh, cool. It's entirely up to you. Well, I'm happy to say I'm not saying anything. Well, how do you like that? So, uh, I like it just fine. That's one last thing I have to remember to do. Okay. Move okay. incitement to adopt the minutes of the November 21st, 2022 meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Moyer? Uh, yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Motion carried. Yep. Uh, now, put my hands on my agenda, which was just here. It, there it is. It doesn't look the same to me at all anymore. But oh, it doesn't. It doesn't. I would now move, uh, entertain a motion to remove payment of bills in the amount of $65,368.70, broken down. General fund nine thousand four hundred forty-six dollars sixty-four cents. Fire fund thirty-seven thousand nine hundred seventy-three dollars twenty-three cents. Cemetery fund five thousand six hundred twenty-eight dollars forty-five cents. AMS billing fund eight thousand one hundred forty-four dollars sixty-nine cents. And road and bridge. Uh, I don't know. Oh, she's got. She's got two bunch of names. Okay. 2121, or excuse me, 2021, $1,518.19 $1 and 2031, $2,656.87. Is there a motion? I move that we pay our bills. No. There's a motion. Is there a second? Any further discussion regarding payment of these accounts? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Move the second to approve payment of bills. Um, Mr. Richard? Yes. Mr. Farr? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Correspondence for the period. I want to run through these and pull them aside if we want to talk about them further, uh, especially uh, Ms. Marlin's um, correspondence with you about restrictive zones in 52. Here we can check that over. She would, she would have liked to have been here. Mm -hmm. uh, a request from you that's Still on the table for a working session regarding some uh, 2023 20, expenditures. So that in there. Okay. Um, that's anything. Uh, that's some virtual training. Uh, invitation to an MLK luncheon. If anyone wanted to go to that. And uh, it sounds like deja vu. We. Got, we're going to get an overdue bill for the um, internet service for the Grinnell Mill because the Glen did not disconnect the service when we agreed. Yeah. Uh, we may mention uh, Jen Huber's correspondence about uh, the restricted the time restriction on solar uh, areas in the township. Uh, Tarma, an uh, invitation, Mara, Barrel, and Barrel. Party, party, oh, I'm going to have a party. Or Green Barrel, Ohio Township Association, uh, oh, excuse me, Ohio Cemetery Association, which is uh, having some financial difficulties, uh, just short-term occurrences of 
uh, legal fees pertaining to the legislation. They've asked for a small st uh, stipend increase for 2023 of approximately $3 a barrel. That's a suggestion. And we can discuss that further, and when their membership dues is, comes up, we can make the decision how much, if anything, we would like to contribute to the additional amount. we need to have an advance on tax distribution, we just have to calculate, they'll calculate the amount and send it each week. That's okay. But we do have to do it by resolution. If we didn't do it, and we may have done it, we have to look back on our first of the year resolutions, uh, board resolutions and you know, movements. To see if we've done it before and how we did it. Well, to see if, if it's a recurring thing that we just do every January, First meeting of every January. I, I have a sneaking suspicion it may be in there, but we'll find out. Any further correspondence in around? No. There's none. Mm -hmm. What? Is there any around? Okay, go ahead. We'll move the power bar. And I just wanted for Cynthia, for Cynthia's um, benefit of Cindy, she wasn't to be taking notes on any of that. I just said there was a discussion for yeah. correspondence. No okay. action was taken at this time. Oh, cool. That's appropriate. I just wonder if she was confused. Go ahead. Thank you. Fire department. All right. Uh, things have slowed down a little bit since the last meeting. We've only had 24 in this <coughs> incident, uh, one of which was in Bath Township. Mm -hmm. We wind down over there. And uh, seven fire incidents, uh, another one of which was in Bath Township. Uh, the fire incidents included a uh, Largish field fire on Thanksgiving Day. Crews fought up on Hilt Road. Someone was burning items that they shouldn't have been. And it was windy and started a fire. So, um, they had mutual aid, I think, from six different departments with brush trucks and tampers. Is that a Hilt Road junkyard or another? No, it's crossing street. Oh, okay. But that was my first thought. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah. <coughs> Not this <laughs> Um, I gave you guys a separate memo from Assistant Chief Powell and I about overtime costs and a recommendation to put the balance of our staff with the approval of our attorney uh, into a work period under this FLSA 7K exemption. Uh, this could save us a substantial amount of <laughs> overtime going forward and is in line with what, you, the, what most fire departments do with their staff. Did that come to today? Yes. Yeah. As I understand it, fire fire people have a, a certain um, type of overtime since they went to work such long shifts. Right. And we've been primarily volunteer, so we haven't really been on the right. radar. And then as we've slowly become more yeah. staff. As, as we have transitioned towards a more paid staff, um, we were hesitant. I was hesitant initially to move the majority of our staff into this work period thing solely because overtime was kind of almost like their their hook to keep yeah. them here. Mm -hmm. um, but our need for staffing has outpaced, obviously, our income, but also just rationality uh, yeah. and the amount of overtime we're paying out. Um, so the FLSA has this Section 207K exemption that exempts public safety people from the 40 hour, seven day a week, a seven day overtime rule. Uh, and when I say exemption, this is, these are still hourly non-exempt staff. They're not exempt like Denny and I are. So they still get overtime. But for instance, what we're recommending, currently our, our three 24, 48 guys, Jason, Nate, and Chris, are on a 28 day work period, which is very standard for full-time firefighters. So they don't get overtime until they've worked 212 hours in that 20-day period. Uh, so typically, one of them in a work period will get maybe four or five hours in overtime. So mm -hmm. it contains those hours. Now those guys work, on average, 56 hours in a week because of their, their shift system. What we're proposing for the rest of the staff, at least the 36-hour ones, um, 
is to put them on a 14 day or two week work period uh, where the threshold is then 106 hours mm -hmm. before they, they start to accumulate. Uh, and that would help to protect us. Mm -hmm. Excessive amounts of overtime that we're <laughs> currently having. Uh, many of the 36 hour people are currently receiving benefits from us as well, so there is that offset. That mm -hmm. um, you know, they may not get overtime, but they're still receiving health care and the other benefits that staff over 30 hours staff. So. Um, but we also, just in a safe side, our recommendation is to have the attorney uh, review this first and before implementation to make sure that we're kosher so we don't have any issues with the Department of Labor. But our read of the Fair Labor Standard Act would allow us to take government paid firefighters and put them into one of the functions. Mm -hmm. But neither of us are attorneys, obviously. So I played one on TV. You were looking into your uh, uh, magic ball, uh, crystal ball, I guess it is. What would you, what change would you make to reduce or eliminate overtime? This is the best, the best avenue for us to do it. Um, I mean, currently our overtime, you know, depending on how the week falls, mm -hmm. you know, how people's shifts fall, like someone like Georgia. She works a regular 36 hours a week. Well, yeah, 36 hours a week is mm -hmm. what she's scheduled for. Mm -hmm. But in a two-week pay period, that could end up being 72 hours, or it could be over 72 hours, depending on how the days fall. Um, so for her, it's built in almost every other pay period. She's going to get four to eight hours of overtime. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the other ones, because of <laughs> How was she in overtime? She worked about 72 hours in two weeks. It, it all, because of the way the pay periods fall? Before this change. Yeah, this is the change. Um, okay. And then currently, I mean, we're just wrapping up the overtime covering for Captain Ayers. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully not, but we'll see if Lieutenant Pellet is out on injury as well. I'm hoping he'll back on Saturday. So we'll see. Uh, so that's another shift we have to cover. And unfortunately, both of them are paramedics, so it limits who can cover for them mm -hmm. to the more expensive part of staff. Of okay. So I mean, I think this is the best way to limit that over time. Mm -hmm. uh, that way staff is still working, they're still getting paid, obviously. They're, they're being paid straight time up until this threshold. So on occasion, some of them may get over time still, mm -hmm. but it's really going to reduce it uh, substantially. How much is substantially? Um, percentage or? Hours or it's hard to tell, but I would say well, we have a lot of people who end up with you know in a two week pay period they may have 96 hours, so this would eliminate that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a pretty common threshold for people, um, yeah. they, so that they, you know they would not they still get straight time for it, but not the other time, which is substantial. Yeah. I think the last three pay periods I looked at, there's like almost 10 percent of the gross wages was over 10. Um, but then they don't, it's going to be dropping paper. How, what is the, on the low end of the salaries, how, what, is the, are, what are a lower end people being paid? Twelve ninety eight. Yeah. <coughs> so, yeah. And that was always the idea with the overtime is that it can after that. Now, yeah. part of the promise to staff was that the BLS staff would receive an increase when the new levy kicks in of $2. And that's something you're aware of? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, the ones that are only walk, so. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not in favor of um, short changing first responders. And that's. Yeah, and you know, the other problem that we've run into with overtime that, that you and I have talked about is that we just don't. We don't have the depth, you know, depth of bench, for lack of a better term. Um, you know, that I have a lot of people with low hours who want to pick up overtime. We just don't have that many people, and that's a common problem that everyone's struggling with. Um, so you're, you're hitting the same people when overtime comes up, and then they're racking up the overtime. So, so. You know, we don't have a, you know, a union or bargaining unit where you might have, you know, a lot of the unions have a list, and 
the other time goes to this person first, then mm -hmm. we don't have yeah. that. And I don't think we're going to get into that. So, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, what you're saying is that some of the low um, our people aren't interested in it anyway. Some of them are, some of them aren't. It all depends. I mean, one of the downsides with using part time firefighters um, is that they typically have three or four jobs. So it is tough to, you know, you'll text someone, one of the guys I can think of a text regularly, and we're like, hey, I got a shift open, you want to pick it up? Because he usually only does 24 hours a week, so four hours a week. Um, but then he's got one of the other two jobs. So he can't pick up those shifts. So. so what you're saying, we, we keep going back to the same people when they keep backing yeah. up those Exactly, so. Okay. We're going to have to work on that in the future. Um, is you know we're we're not there, but as you know, we're we're bumping up against slash over what we're anticipating you know personnel costs to be for twenty three. Um, and so you know that's one of the things I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna hopefully try and uh, look at. I mean. Yeah. I mean, I'd love them, but if you look at some of these people that we're signing checks for, or EFTs, um, they, you know, they've accrued to this point, you know, sixty, seventy thousand mm -hmm. dollars up to now. I mean, that's a pretty good chunk of change for them. Oh yeah, you know. yeah, no, that's for sure. And, and obviously, a lot of it's got to be in a in an overtime capacity. Yeah. Um, so we're going to have to. Look at that strongly. Um, maybe the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association has a pamphlet on um, how that can be passed. Well, you can stop by our booth at the uh, at the Ohio Township Association conference. I think I might. Oh, yeah. Okay, right, right. Um, first of all, yeah. Yeah. I'll probably be there at the booth. So. <laughs> Good. I have a question or two for you. And I had a quick question and. While you snuck out, and, and I do want to ask you about the village thing, um, but I was trying, I was trying to work out these these shifts, these shift times, and you came back with me and said we were we were funding three 24-hour shifts, seven days a week, twenty-six thousand two hundred and eighty hours. Um, I thought we were doing overnight. We were doing three 12-hour shifts. Is it is that yes or? No. I mean, it depends on who's who's scheduled that day. Okay, but in theory, there's there should be three people here. There's the the, the goal is to always have three people. Okay, here, not including any. So that's that's three twelve-hour shifts. Yeah. yeah. Or I okay, mean, three twelve. I mean, we think of it as I know three twenty-four hours. Shifts. I know, but it's it's harder for me to think that way. Okay, okay so then but, during the day we have two twelve-hour shifts, right? Seven seven. In addition to your to your three officers. Yes. In addition to the three guys. Yeah. Okay. So isn't that is that five twelve hour shifts instead of six? Yeah, but I was including the officer in that too. Because that the, the three at night includes Nate, Jason, and Chris. You mean in addition to the three or includes? Includes. Includes. Okay. So your your two eight hour shifts is just for. That's Danny. Just for those two. Yeah. I mean, I had I had Nate in the officer category, so so that's the third. Yeah, that's the third twelve hour. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Um, so tell me about your meeting with whoever you met with today in the village to discuss firefighter police people. Um, uh, that was Thursday. Uh, Chief Bird asked me to uh, join them at this public safety work session that the council had. Um, and it was primarily discussing their budget and you know, a whole bunch of other police matters that really don't relate to the township. But one of their items that they wanted to discuss was this concept that talked briefly at our last joint meeting about this looking at consolidation of police and fire. Um, so, uh, Gavin, um, of council, before Chief Bird spoke, turned it over to me to ask for my opinion as the fire side. And I, I, 
I told them that from a fireside view, public safety departments are, are usually in the start. I mean, there's 30,000 fire departments in the United States, and there's 140 public safety departments in the entire country. Uh, if that model was as successful as city managers wanted to think it is, there'd be a heck of a lot more. <laughs> um, there's also a difference, I mean, I think for me, one of the biggest differences is the difference in mindset that comes from the training that's required. Police officers are trained to be aggressive and assertive, which they should be, but I don't want my guys that way. I mean, they should be assertive, but you know, their job isn't to beat someone senseless, and it is a real different mindset, and what I have found talking to people who work in public safety departments is that you end up with the same thing, cops and firemen. Mm -hmm. Some guys like to be the cop more, some guys like to be the firefighter more. Um, my perception, I didn't do the numbers, Chief Burge did, um, but that the training would be, cost would be out of this world. I mean, like, to take our people and train them as police officers, okay. to take their people and train them as firefighters, and most likely paramedics, right. not just EMTs, right. and then the overtime that comes with having to backfill, because you're not sending everyone at the same time, obviously. It, it makes no fiscal sense to me, Plus, I don't see a need. I don't see uh, people clamoring for, especially since we're two different government entities. Yeah. If it was the Yellow Springs Fire Department, Yellow Springs Police, it might make a little bit more sense. But since we're funded completely differently, mm -hmm. special fire levy mon money can only go for fire and EMS. So then you'd have this weird. Yeah, the nightmare of accounting would just be. Now, there are certainly areas. I think that we could probably share some services, um, you know, maybe do a better job of collaborating on certain things. Um, but a consolidation of the agencies to me seems like that. Aren't there firefighters trained in basic, basic, basic EMT CPR stuff? Um, you mean police officers? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, I mean, there is a model where, especially, <coughs> excuse me, especially out west in rural areas where the sheriff's deputies maybe trained as um, EMTs because mm -hmm. they're going to be the first one on scene for 30 minutes before an ambulance gets yeah. there. Um, thinking specifically like Pitkin County, Colorado, or Aspen and other cities are, their sheriff's deputies are all EMTs because there's one ambulance service covering a district that's you know, the side of the side sure. island, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, there could be the, you know, an argument here that would say maybe Police officers could be trained to EMT level or at least first responder level. Uh, currently, they don't have CPR on first aid, uh, but it also—I mean—it depends on whether or not they want. Right. You know, so, and to flip the coin, how many of our people are going to raise their hand and say, "Yeah, I want to go out and shoot some people up"? I think, with one exception, uh, <laughs> probably none of them. You know, I mean, the the thing is, I became a firefighter because I wanted to be a firefighter. If I wanted to be a police officer, I would have gone to the police band. Mm -hmm. You know, and it doesn't mean I don't respect the work they do. Uh, sure. It also means there's no way I'd want to do the job, particularly nowadays in, in the climate there is. And I think a lot of our guys feel that way. You know, maybe 10 years ago, I could have gone to the police academy, yeah. but now things are different. And, you know, I, don't, I, I don't see it as a big clamoring here for people to be like, ah! Plus, the other thing, if you look at Oakwood, which is our local public safety department. Um, because they're carrying free certifications, your pay rates are significantly higher to attract people. Uh, one, it's hard to attract people to find people who are triple certified. Mm -hmm. sure. um, so you have to train new recruits in a discipline at least. Um, and according to what Chief Burge found, you know, Oakwood started like, just in the 80s. Um, which makes sense again when you're three different people. Yeah. Um, but that cost is excessive mm -hmm. here, you know, in a small town where we're always concerned about the cost to the taxpayer. So I, I don't see much of a, a reason. Um, council you? member Gavin DeVore Leonard, I think his name was, mm -hmm. um, thought about the kind of need to keep exploring it because of the mindset difference. So I'm not really sure what that meant, but um, I, just, I, I don't see a need for it at this point in time, you know. So did you think your voice fell on deaf ears, or it was receptive? No, I think it was re received by them. I mean, they, it's something they want to continue to explore, just, I think, less the idea of consolidation, but more the idea of things that we could do together to share mm -hmm. things. Um, 
you know, did bring up that we did make an offer at one point that they would have a police station here as well, but then the village wasn't ready mm -hmm. by any main shape, you know, form. But there are a lot of other, I think, things. I mean, obviously, we don't buy a lot of the same stuff. Cause my first thing in question is about guns, but um, but there are probably some savings that we could identify if we sat down together and. Other services, you know, we already provide them with first aid and CPR training. Um, but maybe we could get help, they could help us arrange for stuff like, uh, yeah, what do they call that? The CIT training, right? Inter intervention training, um, with like mental health patients, and de escalation training that is always great for EMS people but isn't included in our curriculums, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, they have a better way to get surplus equipment than we do, mm -hmm. typically, because law enforcement has a lot more openings for that stuff. So you things know, like- tanks and assault vehicles. Yeah, I was thinking <laughs> a couple Hummers and a, yeah. you know, a peacemaker That's would be great. Um, actually, what we're thinking about more is um, in this unfortunate era of active shooters, um, you know, by, by protocol regionally, you know, we're supposed to pretty quickly follow the cops like into a school and start treating people, except we don't have any protection. Mm -hmm. And for us to buy new ballistic vests is a very expensive thing without a grant funding. But the police have a lot more access to that type of thing than we do. Grant funding and surplus, whereas as we don't. So I, mean, I was looking at the fire chief's trade show back in July. And, you know, we're looking at 800 bucks. On is a is sell used? No, no, these are brand new. Like, <laughs> oh, you said surplus. But I mean, yeah, we can get surplus, like military surplus. Oh. The downside then, and there's all this e things expire, but at least it would get the guys to where they, if God forbid that ever happens here, they're ready to you know, do the job. But, so I mean, there, there's definitely areas I think we can collaborate, but consolidation to me seems. Are you joining the country? <laughs> Wednesday evening forum? That's the joint meeting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if you want to. I was planning to attend. So. Okay. That's at council chambers? Yeah. Seven o'clock? Yeah. Well, I mean, since you know you originally had a holiday party put together, I didn't know if you were. Yeah. That's why we came to I just had yeah. to this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Couldn't get a caterer, so that was part of the problem. So the point having a holiday party with no food. True. I have it. I, from the paper, I have it at six o'clock. Oh, six o'clock. Six to eight. eight. Oh, even better. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sixteen is better. That's seven to nine. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, all right, cool. Anything uh, else I should tell you about? Uh, I think you guys got the email. Then you got the DOL stuff done. Mm -hmm. So we're just waiting for their response. When is it, when is that due? When would we have to cut them a check? We're not yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, the deadline was Friday. We have received an extension. Deadline was Friday to get that into the investigator, uh -huh. which we met. Yeah. Um, and she responded to Danny and said, thank you, we'll let you know what next steps are. Um, what she had said earlier was that as long as they approve the worksheet, which is their worksheet, thank God, because it would take us years to build more stuff. Mm -hmm. um, then there's some kind of administrative meeting, and then everything's good, and then I assume at that point, maybe the next year, they'll tell us what to issue that. Good mm -hmm. so, and then at what point do we have to put people in that exemption category? I mean, that's not their directive. That's our suggestion. So that would just be whatever. whatever. And we want to do that. We'd like it's, to do that by the first of the year, right? That would be our recommendation. To make it easier. Right? Yeah. And now that we have an attorney now, the old slow ones, uh, it might be a faster to do than <laughs> in the old days. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so that's done. I'm still working on the re-registration for Sam. Um, uh, we're now having a New Year party instead of a holiday party, so it's Sunday, December fifth, uh, January fifteenth. And yeah, Martin Luther King Day. I think the next day is oh, okay. is the official. Uh -huh. We can carouse and sleep in or something. Uh, B shift delivered Santa to the tree lighting on Saturday, so uh, good time was had by all. We were happy to help out, and then um, a couple of things I forgot to put on there. Uh, we just finished up. Hazmat, Hazardous Materials Recertification for the staff. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a free program through Cleveland State University. So staff were recertified in Hazardous Materials, which is required. Good. And then, um, mm -hmm. yeah, especially in the so um, And then just a reminder, I'm on vacation December 15th through the 22nd. Mm -hmm. um, 
That is on vacation December 17th through January 2nd. All these, December 15th through Yeah, all these were approved before half my staff was out. <laughs> Um, Captain Ayers is hoping to be back actually in the middle of December. So. Wednesday, um, I'm not sure what his plans are, but December 17th through January 2nd. He always takes that time off. So we'll have to figure out, uh, well, we'll have to figure out coverage and hopefully the tenapality is not laid up for a while. Hopefully not. It's not the same foot, is it? No, no, it's his name. Just in passing, I have the title transferred over into our name for the tanker, so it's official. Oh, wonderful. So if we run it off a cliff, we don't have to worry about not calling having, Elaine Brown. Uh, yeah, not having insurance <laughs> for it or anything. So. Well, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's all I got. Okay. Well, we have any for the chief? Well, and a new business was a request for a work session. Um, and you don't think we need one, but I'm not, not saying not that. For, not <laughs> well, originally my request was for this short fall, but I think we have that all. Yeah. So the next thing is like, and I, I'm not clear when, when you say get the spending to what we want to spend on personnel. I don't. I don't even didn't know we had a number yet that we were, were aiming for. That we're aiming thing. for six seventy four. <laughs> right. Is that what we're aiming for? Well, yeah, that's, that's what's that's coming that's, in. That's, that's, that's what's coming Because anything we spend over that is money we're not spending on equipment. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean my, our, on the presentations I did, I mean, we're, there's no way. You can't get 674000 Is that? That's, that's just impossible. Unless we suddenly find 40 volunteers who can show up. And I know so, we need. What? Say that again? You can't do what? Well, I mean, the understanding that I had and we had at the fire department was that the initial 670 whatever coming from the new levy yeah. is, I mean, it's all for staffing. Right. But then that would also be supplemented by money from the operating levy. No. And, and that was my understanding as well, and I thought it was the voters' understanding. The operating levy is for operating expenses. But that, that operating levy at this moment in time is payroll. I mean, is um, fire and EMS levy. Yeah, so that's hence the need for, I think, for us all to be in the same room and understand what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Because that was my understanding as well. It's like, yes, we don't want to drain every penny we need to buy. Chris, um, Chris has told me all the things that we've been putting off getting, all the equipment we need, plus the, a medic. But, I didn't, I wasn't aware of the concept that we were going to try to hit all the payroll with the new levy, but we could not try to. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, and then other big questions, mm -hmm. like is our staffing structure what we want it to be? Things like that, and uh, more that we can write along. But that's, I think that's worthy of some work sessions where we can all fill in the blanks of what the others don't know, especially the fire department, who does this every day. So, however, it's not as urgent now that we don't have to worry about shortfall right. in January. So. Yeah, that's a little minor blessing, but I'm glad we have. Yeah, otherwise we'd be meeting next week too <laughs> to figure it out. Mm -hmm. exactly. So what I'm saying is, when when would you guys like to meet? Get through the holidays. You'll be in July. And, yeah. Oh, and we'll yeah. Jerry and Floyd. I was like, <laughs> and no, no, no I'm going like next week on vacation. Oh, and you're um, going leave it next week. Yeah, January. I think. I mean, early January probably the best after the holidays. It was less. Hubble and Loon. I think it's Hubble and Loon. thank you. I'll be back from vacation, Danny's back from vacation, so. Okay. Maybe Don will be back from his vacation. Maybe. That helps. I hope so. Okay, anyone? All right, then. Fire? 
have fun on your trip. Oh, I hope so. I plan on that. So. I will move to um, cemeteries, which I know we had a couple burials. Uh, I talked to the NSF man. Uh, he's also um, been working with the electrician to get the water pump in operation by the spring. Um, what else did he say? Mm -hmm. They're still continuing to work cleaning up. I don't know if you noticed when you were up there, cleaning up the facilities. How do you notice it? You said you looked at Rose. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's how I knew. <laughs> I didn't um, know cemeteries were roads. Well, they're not, but yeah. I just it's all the same thing. just put us up there. Um, okay. What, what, do you, what did you think I might have noticed while I was saying? Um, how diligently they're trying to go through 20 years worth of excess equipment and supplies and things that they don't need and are gathering dust and taking up lots of space. And so I'd ask yeah. them to uh, Go through there. And oh, okay. I thought, I thought you talked about the cemetery. I was cleaned up. Yeah, I did notice that. Oh, okay, good. Um, switching to roads. Uh, so we have competing road reports, road inspection reports. So yeah, we both did road yeah. inspection. I thought they looked great. Um, I didn't see any potholes. I didn't see any fallen trees. I did have a few questions. Um, I didn't realize that big thing on Houston Road was agrarian. Um, and then there's a big construction site on Tobias that I suppose a house is going on. Rife Road, is it ours? Yeah, no. There is a house going on Tobias. Rife Road is not ours. Because it, we, we, it's outside the township or because it's just, just it's it's a county it's, road? It's county road and the county, in their infinite wisdom, didn't give us the responsibility for that one. Mm -hmm. The same way they gave us responsibility for Kyle Road, which we didn't have forever. We only just picked that up in the last 10 years or so. Um, and then when I did just, well, I could talk to you later about 10 years, but it's whether I, I go all the way and ride the line on the top of the township. Mm -hmm. Okay. You go there and then you come back. And when, we, when, you're, when you're way up at the top of the township, are both sides of the road zones on 10 years? Uh, no. Just the just the south, south side. Just the south side. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I've been really enjoying. I've been really enjoying it. Good. Really getting a good feel for it. I'm happy. Yeah. Gotcha. Now, have you been following that rough roadmap that I gave you, or have you been tweaking that? Uh, I've been following the rough roadmap. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. And I didn't take the dump truck. <laughs> huh? Okay. I, I, I have to work so that much. out. I mean. I get it, because I, I can't do mileage in town. It just seems like taking a dump truck on a cruise of the roads just... I, so I'll, I'll have to decide whether what the future holds on that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they're in that dump truck eight hours a day, I swear. I don't know. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> okay. Uh, FYI, you yes. did get that form submitted back to the dispatch that we would send to you. Oh, good. With the contact info. So. Good. Well, then. I'll be staying up late at night waiting for that. <laughs> uh, well, we do have a, we don't have a fist bluffs to report, but we don't have a fist bluffs, right? so we do have a resolution, uh, which is 2244. It's an amendment of permanent appropriations, and I would entertain a motion to approve that. I, I move that we approve these. Um Amendments to permanent appropriations. All right, I'll second that. Any further discussion regarding this resolution? Hearing none, may we vote please. Move and second to uh, adopt resolution 2022-44, amendment of permanent, appro permanent appropriations. Uh, Ms. Moore? Yes. And Ms. Yes. Uh, the resolution passed. Thank you. Zoning Inspector, Mr. Zoff is uh, AWOL tonight. Yeah, he had sent me an email today. Um, he, he, he was going back through the zoning on the uh, um, section of the website, and he had a few suggestions. I need a, a clean copy of the, um, the zoning resolutions and a Word document, so mm -hmm. it could go on his PDF and I could update the PD. And, okay. So if you have that, I need that. Yeah. He, he had some interesting um, 
used to say, but that doesn't need to be talked about in a public meeting. Good. <laughs> uh, standing committee reports. That's the first, or excuse me, the second of the month, so we'll wait for the next one for that. Um, okay. Where are we now? We're at uh, uh, new business. So I guess we kind of talk. We, yeah, I, I moved that since we were talking on the phone. Oh, okay. Things. Um, I don't have any business this evening. Mm -hmm. Kind of do, but I think I'll, I'll hold on. Get you guys excited about this. Uh, old business. Oh, solar in the township update. Marilyn, I'm going to give that to you. Well, I've not heard from the. What came out of the last meeting is that one thing that would really help would really help us is to um, be able to restrict solar large-scale solar for a, a, just a period of time while we gather ourselves. I've not heard back, and we put an inquiry to the heard county, back. from the county. Uh -huh. but, but Jen Huber sent us something. She's, yeah, and she seemed pretty confident that what she was saying was correct, that we, you know, not we, but the, the county could do that. And I, was th I thought it was also quite interesting that she said, keep in mind, as commissioners can turn around and rescind that restriction just as quickly as they put it in place. Yeah, I, I didn't, she didn't specifically address this, like a sunset that would be automatic. It'd be more like, I want a handshake, <laughs> an agreement. Uh -huh. And like you said, elections happen and people change. And mm -hmm. So that'd be kind of a risky thing to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know the people in the county, I don't have a, I don't know if the trust is built like that, where we um, have a gentleman's agreement to... Trust. <laughs> that's an interesting concept. But that's what it would be, wouldn't it? And well, like, well, we'd like to restrict this for two years. So, yeah. Would it be written as part of... I didn't get from Jen's letter that it would be written as part of the... Um, the motion, the um, resolution that we mm -hmm. have, it would... I, that's what I don't have her okay. thing in front of me. I'm sorry, okay. uh, but that's why I understood that. Yeah. Yes, you you put that request in that it would be from January one to July one or whatever how many years. Oh, okay. And they, so they could prove it that way. Maybe I need to speak, or we need to write something more directly to the county themselves and say, with this one, mm -hmm. put a sample. Here's a sample. Put draft on it mm -hmm. to make sure they don't vote on it. <laughs> and say, have them thumbs up or thumbs down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you read Nicole Marvin? I wanted to say Nicole Marvin wanted to be here. She's. I did read it. Been a soldier in the um, Kingwood mm -hmm. solar facility battle. Uh, and I really, I really get her point of view. I, I, I find that um, her point of view is that boy, we right now, whoever comes down and wants to put something in, we're on the front lines. We're doing all the negotiating. We're spending the lawyers' fees. We're defending our backyards, and because um, it's in our backyard, I guess. Yeah, and um, won't we please consider a full restriction? Mm -hmm. And she made a plea for um, community-based um, solar, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. And yeah, um, but I don't know how that community-based solar happens. That's that's a philosophical argument. Or yeah. maybe, or maybe an economic one. Um, well, both, I don't, I'm I don't, sure. I don't know how anybody but a venture capitalist funds a large solar operation. Um, I don't either. And in the, in the township, I mean, something inside the village, they're funding things, but mm -hmm. how does... Oh, they have their own grid, too, that they can yeah. you know, tie into. How does, how does community... Can you imagine a scenario in which there's community solar? Of course, we can't see the future. Well, right. I mean, you've got people out there with thousands of acres. You know, not many anymore, but some people with thousands of acres. And uh, you know, you would need what 400-ish for a 50 megawatt. And I don't know, maybe if they somebody could be, could could convince them to that they could make money on it, uh, then they might propose that. Of course, you have no zoning, right? You know, in place for it. So and it's. Wouldn't it be, would it be allowable in a zoning resolution? 
it's not permitted, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not conditional, I don't know. So, all sorts of questions yeah. that we should get busy on for the future, right. in the future. Anyway, I wanted to say that out loud since um, Nicole wanted to say it in person but had to write a letter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I thought it was very well written and I thought your response was very well written. And there is really a razor's edge of a balance that, that people on both sides need to walk. Because, you know, just because, no, I don't want it. Just, you, yeah. know, you can't just be that animate. Yeah. Some people can. Yeah, I, I found that um, in talking to people that they're kind of dismissive uh, of that in that state. Oh, God, those people don't want any solar. And that's not true. Nicole was very much an environmentalist. She just is dealing with a very big project. Yeah. That, um, Unfortunately, that's the thing, and, you know, it's the elephant, you know, it's a yeah. huge project that got plopped right down in the middle of the country. Yeah. You know, there, was, there was five or six little ones that all got put together then, and to a very, 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 uh, and, uh, uh, any old business, or was that it? I guess that was kind of it. You got another one there, what was that? Well, I had up to Dave's Cemetery, but maybe oh, I should have. Uh, you been having an activity out there? Um, well, yeah, I, I have to figure out a way how we, we get the names of natural burials that happen. Um, no, I'll just talk to Dan. We, we had suggested, the committee had suggested a, a little change to the, the procedure of burying um, people. And we've noticed that two burials have been done, and Dan had agreed to the new procedure, and then he wasn't able to do it, so I'll get with him and find out what, what challenges he had. Okay. Uh, the only thing I had was, and we talked about this now, potential ARPA money that's available to us um, and places that we could use it. I'm not sure you were in the mix at the time, but quite a while ago, we made a commitment to put excess funds into Tecumseh Land Trust's um, you know, fund, fund. conservation <laughs> and easement fund. And we used, to, uh, we used to take all the estate tax money that we were given and put that into that fund. And over uh, 10 years or so, um, we participated with them in, in protecting a substantial amount of farmland in, in Miami Township. This was all Miami Township, this wasn't any of the Clark County or uh, the other county that they were working in. Um, and I'm not saying that we start that whole thing again, but you know, if we're looking for some legitimate place to put it, if you, read, if you happen to read the Land Trust's most recent newsletter uh, for 2022, uh, it was an excellent year for them. They put more land, more farmland in easements than they had in the past, and probably because of you know, COVID restrictions were lifted and people got out, but still won't. Um, so they're still very active and still very dedicated to what they do. Um, it's just a lot. Okay, so. Yeah, you don't mind. Um, no worries. We should, yeah, have a whole discussion on how we want to do that, including our own, our own future. Mm -hmm. as, as you talked about, um, <clears throat> we'll have to redo our comprehensive language use plan sometime in the coming years. <coughs> I did look up that. And the zoning code reflected. I thought that happens piecemeal or gradually. Well, it, it has. It doesn't have to. Okay. It can I didn't be. Know that. Done. I didn't know that. So we might need we, we take care of ourselves and then, you know, and then to come to land trust and then Homie came to us early on when Don had his. Um, open meeting before I was on the board and they did ask for money. We never responded. Um, somebody else asked for some. I think I I inquired about CASP, the climate action, mm -hmm. a couple months ago and you said, well let's see how November eighth goes. Right. So I I guess we'd have to what we'd have to yeah. prioritize. But I'm not familiar with the organization so I, I would hope yeah. you would bring us all up to speed so on that. So 
But here's the good news. Mm -hmm. It has to be allocated by December 31st, 2024. Exactly. And so it's not, we have time to choose our priorities. Mm -hmm. and, um, yep. Spend by 26. Anything else? There's nothing else. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. We're adjourned by acclamation. Thank you, everybody.